This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin's red light district future. And let's begin with the example of an area with real estate that has a really low vacancy rate, namely this. This is some red light district in Thailand, which to be quite clear is not my cup of tea, but this is obviously a bustling economic zone. But the odds of it turning into the next Silicon Valley, I think are quite low. Areas filled with bars and prostitution attract a certain type of business owner and clientele. And there's a type of vicious or virtuous circle that keeps it that way. But you can't argue that this neighborhood suffers from low vacancies. Now let's contrast this with an area at the heart of Silicon Valley with high vacancies that may look something like this. Silicon Valley commercial real estate has been subject to long booms followed by short bust cycles. And I used to live there, so I followed these things. We had the dot-com boom and bust, followed by a period of low vacancies and very low cap rates from 2003 to 2020, when the lockdowns and the move to work from home again decimated some commercial real estate. So we can see how vacancies peaked after the dot-com bust, and then they slowly went back down. And now they have been creeping up in the past few years since COVID. Now let's look at a Bitcoin block with a really low quote unquote vacancy rate. This block is almost completely full, 3.96 megabytes out of a possible four megabytes. And we can see that the inscription in it, the spam in it takes up almost the entire block. And this is what that spam looks like. Now, when I look at a block like this, I just see crappy fiat art. But pro spam crypto VCs and malicious mining pools rejoice when they see a block like this. They say, look, the block is almost completely full. Low vacancy real estate, the landlord, the mining pools collecting full rent. Crypto VCs and other spammers and scammers like to make the argument that spam on Bitcoin will get priced out by monetary uses, that blocks full of spam are just a temporary use of the real estate. And that has the additional positive effect of keeping Bitcoin mining pools happy while they wait for the inevitable, inevitable flood of monetary transactions when the Bitcoin standard finally arrives. At least this is the crypto VC and scammer spammer argument. If these crypto VCs were real estate investors in Silicon Valley, in the wake of the dot-com collapse that we were just talking about and the collapse of commercial real estate prices, they probably would have just rented out their buildings to massage parlors, tattoo shops, and cheap dive bars as a quote unquote temporary revenue source while waiting for Google and Facebook to arrive on the scene, all the while failing to understand that there's a vicious or you might even call it a virtuous circle when it comes to tenants and clientele. Sleazy businesses change the neighborhood for the worse and attract more sleaze. And I think it's magical thinking that you can change the culture for the worse and that there's some sort of magic pill after you change the culture for the worse. There's some magic pill that will, will reverse this change of culture overnight. As I wrote in this post, if we just allow more casinos and prostitution, Las Vegas will almost certainly become Silicon Valley someday. This is the same absurd argument that crypto VCs and malicious mining pools are making about blocks on Bitcoin that are completely full of spam. Unfortunately, we're seeing a similar change in Bitcoin culture as well that may be difficult to reverse if it's allowed to fester for too long. Four megabyte blocks full of inscription spam is nothing to celebrate. Half empty blocks full of opportun spam and no monetary transactions is nothing to celebrate either. As we saw here when Gemini, the crypto scammers, crypto exchange scammers partnered with Mara to mine the pizza block and in huge disrespect to, to the history of Bitcoin, they decided to spam this block on Bits, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Pizza Day and they filled it completely with opera turns, as we can see here uh, is how they did it. If you don't call out sleazy mining pools like Mara and sleazy crypto VCs and sleazy exchanges like Gemini who want to put tokens or inscription, inscriptions on Bitcoin, then it's a little bit like the sole cockroach who finds himself welcome in your pantry. There's going to be a whole lot more of them. We've been told that Bitcoin monetary transactions will eventually price out Bitcoin spam, but will they? What we've been seeing lately is the exact opposite. We've been seeing half empty blocks with only a scattering of monetary transactions. And then we've also been seeing some blocks completely full of spam. Telling me that the blockchain can only grow by four megabytes maximum every 10 minutes on average is hardly a consolation if those blocks are mostly full of spam. And if newcomers to Bitcoin are being drawn to inscription spam or derivatives of the stock price of corporations that have Bitcoin IOUs from Coinbase, this is not 
healthy Bitcoin culture we're experiencing in 2025. And now you add to this Bitcoin core going rogue and continue to make changes to Bitcoin that always tend in the direction of more spam. And if you haven't been following that, I'll put a link to these two videos. Bitcoin core just went rogue from two days ago, as well as this explanation from yesterday about Bitcoin nodes, mining pools and spam and how the whole thing works. In conclusion, ultimately, we're going to need full Bitcoin blocks because that's the only way to increase the transaction fees that will compensate mining pools as the block subsidy, which is currently 3.125 Bitcoin, as this continues to get halved every four years and trends towards zero. Because if blocks aren't full, you can always bid the minimum one sat per V-byte and still get into the next block. And this is why you eventually need blocks full of monetary transactions if you want Bitcoin to succeed. But it really matters, I think, what's in those blocks. And if those blocks are full of spam rather than ordinary, rather than monetary transactions, I should say, if those blocks are full of spam rather than monetary transactions, we're going to be left with one giant stinking red light district blockchain. So what can you do? How can you help? The most important thing you can do is you can stop running Bitcoin Core. You can switch to Bitcoin Knots. You can run a Bitcoin Knots node to help to filter out spam. You can buy BTC instead of MSTR or MSTY or inscriptions. And then you can make actual transactions on chain using your Knots node and your Bitcoin. And if you want to learn more how to do that, I'll put a link in the description notes below running Bitcoin Knots, how to do it. And especially look in the description notes of that video. And I guess I'll copy it and put it in this video as well. I have a bunch of links here about how you can learn how to run and configure Bitcoin Knots. Or if you're running Bitcoin Core, how to switch from Bitcoin Core to Bitcoin Knots in a really easy way. We can see that Bitcoin Knots nodes continue to skyrocket. This is unprecedented in Bitcoin's history. So if you switch to Bitcoin Knots, you're playing a part in this in this new history. And Bitcoin Knots now at 11.91% will probably be at 12% by the end of this weekend. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.